Hello, my online ESL teacher friends. My name is Susan and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm talking about ways to get started and become successful on Amazing Talker. And all of this information is available to all Amazing Talker teachers already. So whether you have a mentor or not, you have the keys to success at Amazing Talker. And I'm going to show you right now how to find it. And as I'm looking here at the Amazing Talker dashboard, I can go to this question mark up in the upper right hand corner, or I can go down, down, down to this question mark that says, may I help you? Click that and that is going to take me directly to the Help Center. So you can search for a topic, you can go to the Help Center, or you can click to contact Amazing Talker directly. The information that I am using is coming from here. If I scroll down, FAQ for teachers, secrets to growing on AT. So these are the things that I'm going to go through with you today and in the next few videos that I put out. I'm not gonna go through everything, but I'm going to go through the key items here that I think are really important that a lot of teachers miss and are looking for when they first get started. They just don't know where to find it. So here it is. If you wanna go ahead and go to your teacher dashboard, click on these and read through them, or don't worry because I'm just gonna share all of it with you right now. How do I create an ideal teacher profile? First, why will students choose your classes? It's because they are impressed with what they see when they look at your profile on Amazing Talker. Now, to be honest, most students aren't even going to see your profile on Amazing Talker until they see a few other things first. So as a teacher at Amazing Talker, you need to know that most of your students are going to find you through the AI matching system or by getting a profile match. And these are two separate ways that you may have contact with the student. For an AI match, the student will have to click in the system that they want to find a new teacher. I'm going to show you how that looks. Okay, so imagine I'm a student on the Amazing Talker platform. I want to find a new teacher. So I come up here, what do you want to learn? And I choose English. This is taking me directly to the teacher wall. As you look at the teacher wall, as a new teacher on the platform, you can go click the same thing and see the same things that I'm doing now. I highly recommend that you do this while you're waiting for your first student matches. But you can look and see what teachers' profile pictures look like. You can see what their titles look like. Now, if you could imagine being a student on the platform, you might feel a little overwhelmed and maybe unsure of how to find the right teacher for you. So then they also have this option here, AI tutor matching. So that's what we're going to talk about now. They click recommend to me. And these students can click whatever is true for themselves as they go through this system. So they can choose their age, what their main learning goal is, whether or not they want classes on weekdays or weekends, or both. They can choose a time of day that they would like to have classes. They can choose their budget. They can decide or choose whether or not they want their tutor to be able to speak another language, maybe their native language. And then any other details, they might click yes and then add any specific topics that they want to talk about. And so then once they click, once they click next, the Amazing Talker system is going to send out matches to teachers. So if you are one of these teachers who gets this AI match, you will get a notification that says, we have an AI match for you. The system has found a student for you or a student who is interested in your course. And then you must click on the pop-up that you get and then send a message to that student. So when a student uses this method to find a teacher, their first, their first engagement with you is going to be in that chat room when they receive a message from you. Now, why is this important? It's important because you need to know that the first thing that they're going to see about you is your profile picture. They're going to get a pop-up chat message with you and possibly two or more other teachers at the same time. So as we look here at this image where we can see these teachers, 
Some of them are easy to see and tell what they look like, and some of them are not. So it's very important that when you choose your profile picture, you need to choose one that's going to look outstanding when it's compared to the teachers above and below you when you send that chat message to the student for the first time. So they will see your picture and they will see your name. If I were to get a message from three teachers, I might be less likely to click on a teacher when their profile picture is not appealing to me, right? We, everything that we do as human beings, we engage our world with our eyes first. What do we see? And if it's pleasing, we might want to learn more about it. If it's something that doesn't really catch our attention or something that it's easily easy to pass by, then you just pass by it and you don't really necessarily pull your attention to it and click on it. So that's why it's important for you to have an excellent profile picture. Okay, so here are some examples of good profile pictures right here from Amazing Talker. So this first one is a little too far away. It's hard to see the teacher. This one is perfect. Her face is clear. It's easy to see. This picture has a cluttered background. Not so easy. This one has a clear background. This facial expression maybe looks too serious or intimidating, um, maybe not approachable. So that's another thought when you are choosing your profile picture to make sure that you are choosing one that seems welcoming and approachable. This is not a place to post your Instagram pictures or your LinkedIn professional business photos because both of those images from one extreme to the other can make you seem less human and it kind of separates that student's connection from you. So make sure that you use, choose a casual photo that is also professional. Professional, but casual? Is that a thing? I guess so. Okay, so if you have a great picture of yourself, but the background is not great. You can use some apps to remove the background from your picture. Here are some that Amazing Talker recommends. I like using just the website remove.bg. If you're doing it on your computer, then you're able to add back something in to use in your picture. Okay, and then the next key point is your title. Um, this is a place where you can include your expertise. I will also add that it is important to also include your name. Sometimes I do see teachers with titles that do not include their name. And the only way you can find their name is when you watch their video and they introduce themselves. This creates a problem for students because they'll remember your name. And when they go to try to message you again, if they go to their chat messages and they want to find you, I would type in the teacher's name and then wait for it to come up. If your name is not in your title, the student has nothing to search on. So they have no way to find you again. Okay, so make sure you have your name. Uh, make sure you use some, some emojis to keep it colorful and easy to read. And these emojis can be kind of like bullet points to separate different things that you want to include in your title. Make sure that the emojis that you choose are appropriate to what you teach. If you teach adults and you teach business English, use something that looks professional. If you teach children, then maybe you can use more playful emojis um, in your title there. And then next is your teacher wall. I already showed you what the teacher wall looks like. And here in this example, you can see that in the teacher wall, the students only see the first three lines of the content. So again, the same as before, you want to make sure that you use keywords and phrases that your students will be looking for that make it very clear what your expertise is and what you teach. This is not really the place for fluff. Fluff is not going to interest someone in learning more about you. So this is where you want to be very real, very concrete about what a student can get from your classroom. If there's something that you want to really pull a prospective student's attention to, you can put it in all caps. And then again, have those emojis similar to bullet points to separate the details so that it's easy for a student to pick something out. If you look down here at this bottom example, where it's like a paragraph, a story, a novel, no one's going to read that. It's much better if you have things that are very sharp and concise and easy for your students to see, read, and 
Heading is your name and your specialty. Your subtitle is your qualifications. And in your introduction for the teacher wall, you use short phrases and emojis. Okay, and then we move on to your teacher's profile page. So it's very important that the first three lines of your teacher profile are interesting and attracting to your students that make them want to read more. Don't be boring in your first page. Maybe don't start with, I graduated from the university, blah, 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 unless you went to Harvard. If you went to Harvard, yes, maybe put that in your first three lines. But if you're like me and you just went to North Carolina State University, then maybe that's not a priority. But for me, it's a priority to say that I've been working with children for 30 years. I've been a coach. I've been a teacher. I've been a babysitter. I've been a nanny. I've done a lot of things. I've done a lot of things working with children. So because I teach kids, that is priority information that needs to take up that prime real estate. So what is it about you that is going to convey your expertise and let your potential students know that you are the teacher they are looking for? That's what needs to go in those top three lines so they can keep reading and learn more details as they go. Again, not a paragraph, keep it short and concise still, but just some teasers to keep them reading. Okay, so here we go. Here's their example. It says to use short phrases. Yes, I agree. Use bullet points. Nobody wants to come here and read a novel on your teacher profile. So bullet points are important, relevant emojis. Keep it, keep it clear, keep it colorful, keep it interesting, and also be convincing and appealing. So make sure that you are using those concrete terms that convey your expertise. If you are not an expert in your subject, maybe you need to find a different topic to work on. All right, key point number three, use this checklist to review your updated profile. So your photo needs to have a clear face, clear background, and be friendly. Your title needs to include your name, your specialty, and emojis. Your teacher wall description should be short sentences or keywords only along with emojis. Your profile page description should be a bullet point intro with that is organized in, par well, it says paragraphs, but really I would call it in sections as they go through short sentences and be convincing and appealing. Okay, so now that you've got your profile set up and you want to see how it looks, you can get there by scrolling down on your teacher dashboard, then click view my profile, click that, that will take you over to your profile. And now you can copy and paste this link to use elsewhere. If you are working with someone like me, if I ask you to send me your profile, that's exactly how you can do it to view it. All right, my friends, that's the first video on how to create an ideal profile. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video if you liked it, and watch this video next.